Okay, in our video series on toxicology lectures, in this video, we'll be talking about organophosphate poisoning, commonly called as insecticide poisoning. We'll discuss that what is the presentation of organophosphate poisoning and how do you manage it in emergency department. First of all, organophosphates are commonly present as insecticides and their poisoning is more common in the developing countries. Other than that, organophosphates nerve gas agents like serine have been used as bioterrorism agents. They can be absorbed through skin, through gut, through bronchial mucosa and they accumulate in neuromuscular junctions. Now we will discuss the mechanism of action of organophosphates. We have presynaptic neurons and postsynaptic neurons. These presynaptic neurons release acetylcholine and this acetylcholine binds to the receptors present on the postsynaptic neurons. And this acetylcholine causes stimulation of the receptors resulting in increased parasympathetic activity. Now, this acetylcholine is then degraded by a compound by an enzyme called as acetylcholine esterase. Therefore, to prevent overstimulation of the postsynaptic neurons and the receptors. So, acetylcholine esterase degrades the acetylcholine to prevent overstimulation of the postsynaptic neuron. What organophosphates do is that they block this acetylcholine esterase. They bind acetylcholine esterase and block it. First, organophosphate reversibly block it. Then, after some time, aging takes place. After a few hours, aging takes place. And the organophosphate binding to this acetylcholine esterase enzyme becomes irreversible. Inhibition of the acetylcholine esterase enzyme results in accumulation of acetylcholine in the neuromuscular junction. Accumulation of acetylcholine in neuromuscular junction results in overstimulation and increased parasympathetic activity. Presentation of the patient would be that the patient would be having all the signs and symptoms of increased parasympathetic stimulation. You can easily remember it with the mnemonic dumbbells. D for diarrhea, urination, meiosis, bradycardia, emesis, vomiting, lacrimation, lethargy, salivation. Simply remember it as lacrimation, salivation, urination, defecation. All the signs and symptoms of parasympathetic overactivity. In severe cases, what you would see is that the patient would be having paralysis, respiratory failure, bronchospasm and increased bronchial secretions. These are all the actions of parasympathetic nervous system. And in few severe cases, you might be able to see convulsions and coma in patient. Hyperglycemia and cardiac arrhythmias are also seen in severe cases of organophosphate poisoning. Symptoms of organophosphate poisoning can also be delayed. Delayed effects are seen after one to four days as cranial nerve palsies, muscle weakness, and respiratory failure. And sometimes after two weeks, patient might present to you with peripheral neuropathy in the legs, which makes the diagnosis difficult. Coming to the treatment and management of organophosphate poisoning. First of all, as I said, that organophosphates can easily get absorbed through skin. So you must ensure that all the staff wears protective clothing, mask, gloves, and proper protective equipment. Then you remove all the clothing of the patient and change it with the hospital clothing to reduce absorption of poison. You have an ABC approach, you clear the airway secretions, you do the suction and you give oxygen. And in some cases, you might also need intermittent positive pressure ventilation. You insert a IV cannula and you maintain the venous axis. Then you take the blood sample for cholinesterase levels. Remember that the blood sample for cholinesterase levels is taken in an EDTA tube and you put that EDTA tube on ice while you shift it to laboratory because you have to maintain temperature of 4 degrees centigrade otherwise the results would be wrong. So while shifting that sample from the side to the laboratory, you have to put it on ice. You give diazepam to treat agitation and convulsions if the patient is having seizures. 
if there are profuse bronchial secretions or if there is bronchospasm in that case you have to give atropine atropine is an anticholinergic agent it blocks the parasympathetic nervous system therefore it counters the parasympathetic stimulation caused by organophosphates in adults you give it 2 mg and in children you give it with the dose of 0.02 mg per kg and you repeat it every 5 minutes with dose doubled every 5 times until the chest is clear or the systolic blood pressure is greater than 80 mm of hg or the pulse is greater than 80 because as i said that parasympathetic stimulation would result in bradycardia hypotension and increased airway secretions in moderate to severe cases you give pralidoxine now remember as i said that initially organophosphates bind the uh, acetylcholine esterase reversibly the binding is reversible and after a few hours have passed aging takes place and that binding of organophosphates with the acetylcholine esterase becomes irreversible and you cannot reverse it now if you give pralidoxine within 24 hours of exposure when the binding is reversible then pralidoxine would effectively detach organophosphates from acetylcholine esterase and acetylcholine esterase would be free but after 24 hours if you give pralidoxine it would be ineffective because the organophosphates would have irreversibly bound acetylcholine esterase and pralidoxine would not be able to detach it from it so you give pralidoxine within 24 hours of exposure the dose is 30 mg per kg iv over 30 minutes followed by an iv infusion at the rate of 80 mg per kg per hour improvement is apparent within 30 minutes in summary we talked about organophosphates as insecticides can get easily absorbed through skin they block acetylcholine esterase resulting in increased parasympathetic stimulation all the symptoms remembered by dumbbells mnemonic the delayed effects of organophosphate poisoning you ensure all the staff wears ppe protect the airway maintain the iv access give diazepam give atropine repeat every 5 minute with doubling of the dose you give pralidoxine within 24 hours If you liked my video please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on toxicology lectures and emergency medicine the link of those videos are given in the description below thank you very much